How, how you doing, doing, Ashley? Good. How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Can't complain. You look nice. I like. That. <laughs> Thank you. You as well. I like this. I like this little uh, backdrop you got going on. Thank you. Thank you so much, City. I'm so happy that you're talking to us today. I have so much to talk about. So um, I hope you don't mind my first question. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling as a black man in America right now? It's a heavy one. It's a complex one. Um, I feel a lot of things. I feel proud, first mm -hmm. of all. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I feel angry. Um, and I feel motivated um, to figure out, to... to continue to find specificity within my lane and how I'm going to combat negativity towards black people, white supremacy, all of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so yeah, there's some positive in there, but there's definitely some frustration, some anger, some pain um, all wrapped up into it. So. I ask you because of the state of, you know, the climate that we are in right now, you know, we can't deny it or like look away from it. It is right. what it is. And so mm -hmm. I posted or reposted on my story today this billboard, and it had the names of Black men and Black women who were killed by the police while doing normal activities. So right. jogging, going to the store. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt nervous being out doing a normal activity like jogging, going to the store, going to the bank or what have you, just doing a normal activity. Have you felt the like tense up or the like, if you have seen the police, have you felt that or? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I'm a black man. So every time I see the police, it's, it's, it's kind of like I'm allergic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, driving, you know, extra precautions, precaution while driving, making mm -hmm. sure, you know, I just, I just feel, you could feel the body tense up a bit. Right. Um, for me, I, whenever I'm around police or anything like that, not because I'm scared of them per se, but I just don't know. It's 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 in in the society in the world that we live in. Um, this this America, you know what I'm saying? Right. You you don't know where some where where something can go. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know if it, it the turn. You know, it, it it can be it can start off as a stop for a light and then end up, you know. Right. You, you either thrown in jail or, or worse. So, yeah, no, no, I definitely, um, I felt that I've actually had a, you know, my own personal experience with run-ins with the police before and um, was wrongfully, you know, thrown in, thrown in the cell off of, off of nothing, off of inquiring about one of my friends who was actually, you know, having an issue with the police. And then I somehow got wrapped into it, not somehow because I was black um, and, and ended up in a cell and it's, and so I've, I've had that, that experience firsthand. Um, don't, don't wish it on anybody because it was just a, you know, it's a traumatic experience, right. you know, and it's, and it's so small because it happens to, it, it happens within our community so often, but that doesn't mean that it's not traumatic. And that doesn't mean that you don't have to heal from that and that there are things that can come up later, you know, triggers that may come up later um, that I don't even know about, you know, all the protesting and stuff right now, the things of people being arrested and, you know, there was for, for a minute, I was a little refrained from that and, right. and wanting to be kind of there because of my experiences that I've had. But, um, you know, I still ended up going to some protests and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's a hard thing. You, I love that you say, or not love, because I hate the fact that we even have to have these types of conversations, but the fact that you said that it was traumatic. And I feel like this is all traumatic, even if you haven't been placed in jail by police, watching the different things that we see on TV, on social media reported, it's very traumatizing to us in the Black community. Um, mm -hmm. How have you dealt with your trauma from that? Have you, are, do you seek therapy? Have you just kind of brushed it under the rug? How have um, you dealt with that? I, yeah, I kind of, originally I brushed it under the rug. It was actually, you know, 
it was it happened two days before the premiere of Wu Tang, actually. Wow. Um, so two days before the premiere of Wu Tang, I was in uh, Burbank, California, um, and yeah, that's how that's when I was um, wrongfully accused, uh, wrongfully, uh, you know, thrown in jail. Right. They didn't tell me why, you know, until I got to the to the the actual you know jail and um, was booked. Why? And apparently, I was, you know. It, Sorry, <laughs> no. I, I don't. I don't really. Yeah, I, I. I think you asked. You asked me how I was dealing with it, and so I said, yeah. I, to a certain extent, it is brushing under the carpet because yeah, it is such a real. It's a reality for a lot of black people. Right. Um. It within you know having run-ins with the cops within you know our communities, and so to a certain extent, it feels a little like well, you know, this is just kind of what happens, and even that's, that's right. fucked up. You know, right. even that's right. There's so much wrong in that. Um, what I do, what helps me is working out, you know, staying physically fit and active, um, mentally strong, physically strong, and spiritually strong um, to withstand all the, the shit that we face as Black people living in America. So I feel like that's self-care is, is the way that you, you can work through all, you know, all of those things is by making sure that you are strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. Thank you for sharing that because yeah. people need to know, like, how can they work through those emotions? Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. So Sidiq, you grew up in Brooklyn. Is that right? Yes. Um, yes. What was your childhood like as a child? Did you what what did you dream of doing? Did you want to be a teacher or was it always I wanted to be an actor? How was um, low key, it was always it was always acting for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I remember I was like in kindergarten, I think, when I did my first play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I played Arthur, <laughs> Arthur the Aardvark, you know, the, the yeah. Arthur TV show. We did like a little play version or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I was just like doing plays in school mm -hmm. and always kind of drawn to that. And then I went to a middle school for um, for drama. I was in the drama pro program in uh, middle school and high school and then eventually in college. Um, so it's kind of always been something that I've been interested in um, and my passion. And, you know, growing up in New York, with the, you know, Broadway just being a train ride away, I was always, you know, going to see a bunch of Broadway shows, musicals or plays and, you know, doing the rush, the student rush tickets for $25 and stuff right. like that. So I got to see all of the, you know, I still have like a, a collection of my playbills and stuff on some on right. some nerdy shit, but, <laughs> you know, like it's just what I love. You know, I, I've always been drawn to it, um, but I don't think it wasn't until I'd say I got to college, I got into to my school that, I realized that, oh, wait, this is actually what I can do as a career and be a working actor. Um, I always knew I was going to be an artist. I always knew that I was going to make money doing something within the arts, whether it be choreography or directing or, you know, writing or something. You know, I, I knew I was going to do something. But once I got into school for acting for college, I was like, all right, but like that's this is just what I'm going to be doing. And you attended Carnegie Mellon University. How okay. did that prepare you for where you are today? That um, for me, it was, um, I think a couple things. It, the weight that the school holds, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, within the industry and people kind of referring to that as like, a you know a really good school for acting or a really good school for the arts just and a really good school in general because you know they have a bomb you know um uh computer engineering programs mm -hmm. and all different types of programs so to me like you know people say like steel sharpens steel or iron sharpens iron mm -hmm. so i for me that was a big thing was entering into this ensemble of people who were all you know the most lit and where they came from, you know, the best actor or the best singer or whatever. So it was kind of like that just brought it up a notch for me. And I think that on top of having so many notable alumni, you know, right. Katina Miller, Billy Porter, Zachary Quinto, you know, and then having those people come back to the school and teach classes, it bridged the gap in my mind between this idea of famous actor or famous this, or even fame in general, mm -hmm. that, 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 came down to working actor working person you know like something that was achievable so then it wasn't about you know it's never really been about the fame or anything like that for me it was always about the craft and right. also being able to support myself yes. and so I, here I was going to the school that was teaching me all of these things all of these techniques um 
that I can use, you know, it, within my acting. And, and on top of that, I'm meeting these people who have come from this program and are now successful. And so that, that the closing of that gap, I think, is what did it for me. Let me ask you this, City. I've asked this question before to people that, you know, are trained and they go and educate themselves in the field of acting. For you, right. per se, do you feel that it's important for people to, if they want to pursue a career in acting, get trained, go to the, the schools like yourself? Or do you feel like if you're not able to get into a school, you can still have a successful career? What are your thoughts on that? I think, I think, if, I think you can still have a successful career. Right if you're not able to get into the school. Um, but to me, training is important. Um, mm -hmm. That's just because that's what I know. Right. You know, I'm sure if I, if it wasn't my trajectory, I maybe have some other opinions, but I can only speak from what I know. And what I right. know is the training. Um, I know that what it gives you is longevity, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, in school, you learn things like, you know, you do voice and speech training. So you learn how to warm up your instrument. You know, and that's something that you need over time. It's like you put, you know, it's like working on a car. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in this car, like school to me is like getting all the parts, knowing how to work all the parts, knowing how to fix something. If there's a leak or, or, or a flat tire or something, you know how to fix it. So that way you can go further. Whereas, yeah, you may have this really nice car, this really cool, flashy, you know, you may be this real cool interesting person that everybody loves right now and you're right. this flashy car but how are you going to feel after a hundred thousand miles of driving mm. or fifty thousand miles or even twenty five thousand miles you may break down and you don't have no tools to fix it i love that that's a so, good that's good training to me is is very very important and um I also believe with my the more you train the more flexible you become as an artist right. um and then you can take on a bunch of different roles because i think that that's what you know the acting is is right. when you can you're not necessarily the character that you're playing but yet you can you have the skill set to transform into this person mm -hmm. and be believable within these circumstances and have the audience be like oh yeah like that's so and so from the show you know right <laughs> stuff like that yeah i love that so your training prepared you very well for uh, your role as a call. Don't <laughs> Thank you so much. And Wu Tang American Saga, man, you guys killed it. I mean, Thank you. and for those who have not watched it, it's the coming of age story, basically, of you guys as kids. You're coming up in uh, Staten Island, and you're trying to basically find your way out. But in the midst of all of these circumstances that you know, kids grow up in and you're just trying to find your way and your way out is through music. Talk right. to us about how you got this part, this role. I mean, you, you killed it. I'm like, <laughs> yes. I Thank you. Thank you so much. Talk Thank to us so about much. this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, I auditioned out in LA. Actually, okay. I was living out there at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember getting my first audition and I didn't really know. I think I actually originally auditioned for um, Bobby. What? Um, yeah. So I went in for Bobby. And this was still at the time that I didn't even know that, like, Bobby was RZA. And, right. and Dennis Coles was go. You know, I didn't right. know the, these things. And so I, I did, you know, my Bobby audition. And then they called me back in for Dennis. And then even then I was like, oh, maybe this is another Wu member that I don't know about, you know, maybe this is a different character. So my initial auditions, I actually didn't even know that it was Ghostface that I was portraying, wow. which I think is super important in the whole process of how I attacked it because I'm not playing Ghostface. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm playing Dennis Get Cole. It. He yeah. was a very different, you, you, that was like the seed of this huge tree that everybody knows, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I really was trying to figure out that person before I tried to attach all these other preconceived notions, you know, about who, you know, Ghost is. Right. Um, so, yeah, that was that was the process. I, you know, I, I originally, you know, did my, did my audition for Dennis. Then it was some time, some time passed. And then I got a call back and I was like, okay, bet. You know, that's when I met uh, some of the producers and then, I had my, um, I think I had an, uh, my producer session. That's again, where I met some of the producers. I think that's where I met RZA the first time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, the last, last step 
was a, a, a chemistry read that I had with um, Zoli. Yeah, at that point, guys, yeah. Like, <laughs> at that point, she um she been uh been cast already, and I just mm -hmm. remember that there was like me and this one other dude in the in the waiting room, and I just I'm from Brooklyn, so I was bumping my Jay Z on the way there. I was in that you know <laughs> waiting room said. listening to Jay, you know listening to Jay, listening to some Wu, you know mixed in there, and mm -hmm. and was just like this is my role. Um, and I went in there. I remember the you know I forgot what the I don't know who the gentleman was, but he came up to me and was like, yo, bro, like, good luck. In my mind, I'm just like, don't wish me too much, bro, because this is a wrap. I got it. <laughs> I already so, got um, it. Yeah, so, so it was one of those. But, um, so, yeah, that was the process of getting the role. And so then you find out, you get it. How, how do you find out? Do you get a call from your agent, your manager? Yeah. Where are you? I, when you get the call, <laughs> where are you? I remember getting that call too, because it was a, it was a lot of back and forth. It was like they, this person really liked you, or that person really, you know. And and for me, my main, you know, something that came up for me that almost was like a you know pause was the fact that I was a newcomer, right. you know. So you here here I am in between you know Ashton Sanders from Moonlight and, and you know Shamik Moore from Dope, mm -hmm. and I didn't have no you know major credits on my resume. Um, I was I was a, a guest star on Boomerang on right, BET, yeah. and then I also had a recurring role on Messiah for, on Netflix. But other than that, you know, I didn't have this long list of of you know things. So a lot of it was like, oh, well, can we trust him? Or da 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 da. Is he is he prepared to to carry this? But um, I was, <laughs> I was. So I'm glad I'm glad they you know took that chance you know yeah. on me. Um, I'm re I'm really thankful for the opportunity for sure. Um, but I remember getting a call because I, so I say all that to say leading up to it, it was a lot of conversations where I was like, so did they, you know, like mm -hmm. keep calling my agents, so, you know, I was calling my agent, I was calling my manager, I was trying to figure out, you know, and they were still kind of like, we, we do, they, they were making their calls to their people and it was still kind of so much in the air. I think the night that I found out, I was on my way out. It was on a Friday, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I was like, oh, you know, I'm not going to find out till Monday. I'm not going to okay. find out till, like, you know, next week. So I'm going to just chill out. I'm going to go out with my homies. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to just, you know, just be out and, and try to forget about it. Right. And so I remember, like, getting, I was getting dressed or whatever. And then I get a call it's from my manager. And I'm just like, hold on. And then, and then he's like, yeah, I got, I got your agent on the phone. And so I'm like. Whenever they both on the phone together, I'm like, hold on, something is going. <laughs> is that a good sign when they're both on the phone? Okay. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it, it's either good or normally it's good because if okay. it's some bad news, one only you know only one of them gotta say it. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Oh yeah, it was also my birthday weekend. Um, but oh. yeah, so so I remember oh. getting dressed and um and just getting a call and he was like yeah i got your agent on the phone and then my, i think my manager said something like yeah i'm just so excited to visit you on set <gasps> and so i'm like what That's like what, what do you mean <laughs> for what right and then he was like yeah you booked the wu-tang and i was just ecstatic wow. like I, I was i was <sighs> like feeling so blessed and <laughs> yeah no <laughs> facts and i remember like telling my mom and and um what like did she that. say? Was she? Were they proud? Were they like? I yeah, guess. yeah. Because they've been, they've, they've been. You know, my mom. You know, especially my mom has been such a support uh, for me throughout right. the entire process. You know, she's known for a long time that this is what I was passionate about, but she always, you know, pushed me to get an education right. and and to make sure, you know, that if this is what I was going to do, that I was going to be able to do it well. Um, and so having somebody that support system and not just, you know, her, my, my dad, my brother, you know, my family in general, mm -hmm. um, because like I said, I've been acting for a really long time. So it was just like, I, you know, I, I did it, <laughs> you it know, like it was like one everybody. of those moments. Everybody yeah. should celebrate. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. So you get the call, your birthday weekend, and then you show up to set and then you're playing Dennis Cole, Ghostface right, Killer. Right, right. Did you ever conversate with him and talk to him? How did you approach playing this character from, like you said, Dennis Cole, not necessarily Ghostface. How did you approach the role? Right. Um, are you reading comments? If, are you reading the comments in here? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no. <laughs> okay. I did just see that one about the, the, the birthday weekend, but no, that was the only one. Um, But 
as far as speaking to him, I didn't, um, I actually didn't speak to him for a while while we were filming. I think it was about maybe like the third or fourth episode before I actually met him in person. Okay. Um, yeah, originally I, I was just kind of taking it off of Riz's, uh, you know, what he was saying because he was very involved and he was there during the first three episodes, which were like the building blocks of, mm -hmm. of creating the character and everything. So I really just leaned into that because I'm a strong believer. You can learn a lot about a person by what they say about themselves, but I feel like you can learn a little bit more about what other people are saying. Um, because, you know, you may have this one perception of what's going on, mm -hmm. but, you know, from the outer perspective, how other people are, you know, taking it, that's just, you, you can just learn from that. I'm not saying one is more important than the right. other. Actually, I just think you can learn a lot about what other people are saying as well. Right. Um, so I was, you know, yeah, relying on RZA and, and, and kind of checking in with him. I also did a lot of research, you know, I, I watched a lot of old videos of, you know, interviews and, and um, with Ghost and about the things that he liked to do, the music that he liked to listen to growing up. I listened, you know, I remember in my trailer, I would listen to, you know, some of the some of the music that he said that he liked to listen to. I remember, you know, I went to the comic book store and got some Iron Man comics and I would read that in my spare time, you know. So there were just like little things instead of just trying to, you know, immediately connect with him and, and, right. and, 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 and I tried to find the other clues that were around because there's a lot of clues about who a person is and, you know, what things that influence them um, out there. And so I just, I, I, I used that, you know, in the beginning. And then, you know, when I finally met him, it, it confirmed a lot of things for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that, that was, that was kind of my process. It was a little, it was a little more, you know, outside of the box um, right. than I think most people would, would assume. And did you listen to Wu-Tang? Were you familiar with their individual stories or any of it growing up? You grew up in Brooklyn. Did you know about them? Obviously. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I definitely, definitely grew up uh, listening to their music. Um, I was familiar with their music. I wasn't like a, a Wu head necessarily, but right. I was definitely familiar with, you know, M-E-T, H-O-D, man, and Cream, of course. Um, so there was, there was certain things that I knew about this story um before we started but there was so much that i learned and mm -hmm. and and i was so happy to have that a little bit more again like a more of an open mind approaching it right. because i didn't feel limited there were certain things that i was able to do or ways that i was able to think about these characters that it, i think if i had been such a huge Wu fan and a huge ghost fan that right. that would have that would have caused a block for me in developing this character you know because some yeah. of you know some of the some of the the story that we tell in is factual and some of it is more fictional for the story so again there's even that distance you know within that and so i think that that is important to have a little bit of space um even when you are playing a real person as an actor i like to have a little bit of space so that i can do a little bit of my thing and create right. something for the audience because at the end of the day we telling the story to the audience mm -hmm. you know it's for y'all you know so well, y'all told it to us well because you guys got picked <laughs> up from season two. Yes, um, yes. We, I'm so excited for season two because I felt like the way it ended, it's so much more, obviously it's so much more because you guys, you hadn't even really got, you ha guys hadn't got started the way it ended. So if you guys hadn't watched it, go and stream season one on Hulu right now. But yes, I'm so excited do. about season two. Talk to us a little bit about what we can expect if you know anything and also we were missing a few people. Uh, you got, are we going to see you got in Capadonna in season two? Will we get a little bit of that in you and Raekwon's like evolving of your, right. will we get, break it down for us, season two. What can we expect? See, I wish I had more to break down for y'all, but I really don't. You know what I'm saying? With the pandemic, um, everything, all productions were put on hold and it affected a lot of our scheduling. Right. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to it just as much as y'all to get to know the story and, and, and new characters and stuff that's going to be introduced for the next season. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know about season two. Um, but we definitely will be, you know, starting back up soon once all this Corona stuff yeah. dies down a little bit um, and not even dies down, but just start to understand it more so then we can work around it. Right. Um, but we haven't been on set, so I'm I'm sorry to. <laughs> I know a lot of people have been yeah, people dying like, for some ah, information, yeah. but but I don't I don't have the information. I'm dying for it too. So yeah, we we're excited because I think it was supposed to be coming out at the end or 
20, the end of this year, like in, cause it came out in September of last year. So I think it was supposed to be coming out around that same time of this year, but probably not. Since. Coronavirus has taken over our, yeah. our world. Um, we'll be looking out. Coronavirus. I know, coronavirus. We'll be looking out. So keep us posted on that. So Messiah, talk to us about that. You play yes. Keon Woods. Talk to us a little bit about your character, Messiah. Um, yeah, so Keon was um he was a college student. Mm -hmm. Um in the first season, uh I think it was funny because when I read the, the character breakdown, I was like, dang, this sound a little like me. Yeah. Uh which is cool. Um but yeah, he was just a college student. He was a hardworking kid. Um, I know his like his uncle was in the CIA and mm -hmm. um you know had a tie to Eva. He was like really intuitive and um a scholar intellectual you know what i'm saying and and but then his by the end of the season he kind of with the messiah arriving and not knowing if it's real or not real or you know what um yeah just like where he stood within his own beliefs it mm -hmm. started to lead him into a little bit more of a rebellious spirit um I mean, I wish I had a little more time to, you know, develop him. And I was, you know, I was meant to come back as a larger role or so I was told for the next season. But we actually, uh, Masai got canceled for season two. So, I saw that. yeah, I think it was, a, I think it was a little too hot for the people, especially with all that's going on right now. So I, I completely understand it. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that what's meant to be will be. Yeah. So it's just that, that, that role just wasn't meant to be. It did receive some backlash in regards yeah. to like the demon, uh, Muslims and how they were depicted or whatnot. Yeah. Um, we loved you in that too. I mean, you are <laughs> the bomb.com. But, um, Sadiq, Romeo and Juliet, this is yes. exciting news, right? Yes. Because you, this is a full circle moment for you because you actually played Romeo, um, yes. in a play when you mm -hmm. were like, what, 21 or something? Talk yeah, to us yeah. about this full circle moment of you played Romeo. Mm -hmm. in a play growing up and now you're going to be portraying and starring in a remake if you will a mm -hmm. modern day take on Romeo and Juliet talk to us right. a little bit about this uh, show this movie rather and when we can see it yeah so um yeah it, 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 it is uh it was a blessing because I definitely have some experience you know I mean even in school we we studied Shakespeare we had an entire uh semester of two semesters actually of, of Shakespeare so I've you know, trained in it. And like you said, I was, I played Romeo in um, Chautauqua yeah. uh, Theater Company's uh, production back in 2017, I believe. This was right before I moved out to LA. Okay. And then right after um, Wu-Tang happened, I remember my agent saying like, yeah, we got this audition for this Romeo and Juliet movie. Uh, the director, Kerry Williams, he's, you know, up and coming black director, really dope, had some, you know, accolades from Sundance and had his, you know, movies and the film circuits and stuff like the festival circuits I should say so I was really excited and I was like oh dope and you know at the time you know back when I played Romeo I feel like I was a very Romeo-esque time in my life but now I'm playing Mercutio who's a little bit more wild a little more brash a little more out there and I definitely feel like that aligns with kind of what, what's going on in my life right now so definitely a blessing it was it was a um, yeah, really, really dope experience. I got to work with some really dope artists, uh, Cameron Angles and RJ Seiler. Um, we, that's, you know, Romeo, uh, Benvolio and Mercutio, we're all black, you know, working with black men. That, that was a really dope experience. And also just being able to reimagine this right. very classic mm -hmm. love story that's always, you know, most of the time whitewashed right. in a different way because it's, you know, black, Romeo is black and uh, Juliet is Latina. So and I'm and I'm Afro Latino, I'm Puerto Rican as well. So I was around my people, you know, on set. And so it was just really yeah, we really just got to create something really magical and 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 really different. And I hope everybody that's watching that knows me from Boo is ready for it because I'm playing a completely different character. And I and, and I love it. here saying that they want you to be their Romeo. <laughs> so people are like with the are thirst trap and they're like, wait a minute, can you be our Romeo? <laughs> so hit me up, hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yes. see. I love it. So, and when is it? When when can we watch it? When can we see it? So that was another thing that was kind of you know thrown by the Rona. The Rona <laughs> just came and wiped done wiped up <laughs> everything Rona for everybody, right? Um, but uh, 
I, that should be releasing, I think, later or, or either later this year or at the beginning of next year. Okay. Um, I heard that, you know, we're still supposed to be doing the festival circuits. And so hopefully we'll be in some festivals once those start back up and, and eventually, you know, a limited theatrical release and then hopefully picked up by a streaming service. So it'll definitely be released and available. Um, as far as the when time right now is just such a weird thing, I think, for everybody. So... I don't really have no solid answers, but that's that. It's in the canon. It's finished. It's the movie. We we, we were able to wrap it before um, Corona hit, so wow. it'll that's definitely good. be out soon. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah. So let me ask you this: How are you? How have you protected your mental state? I know we talked a little mm -hmm. bit about self care at the beginning. How have you protected your mental state during quarantine throughout this whole process of? You know, being on the go, being on the go, having these projects that you were set to film, and then them all coming to a halt. How have you, what have you done to, you know, mm -hmm. protect yourself and protect your mind and your heart of, you know, what's going on with that as well? Right. Um, I feel like for the most part, I've been good. I've been blessed. Um, I think at a time like this, it puts a lot of stuff into perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and realizing the things that are important within my life. Right. Um, and always just taking note of that checking in on that because that that evolves and that changes as we evolve and as time you know continues the things that may be important to you right now may not be important to you in a couple years or in a couple months or even a couple days you know so i think like have like having that awareness and continuously checking in on the things that i need um that on top of like i said just being tr trying to stay physically active mm -hmm. um so i started you know for a while, I was doing some yoga and, you know, run, going on runs and bike rides and stuff like that is always um, helpful for me because health is wealth. So if I'm physically feeling healthy and I'm feeling good, then um, my spirits are normally aligned with that. Right. Um, I also just, uh, you know, came off of Ramadan, uh, the holy month of Ramadan, because I'm Muslim. Um, and so I was able to fast. And that for me actually was a the grounding that I needed in a time of chaos uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Because, you know, when the corona originally hit, it was so much chaos and confusion. Right. You know, am I going to get it? Do I have it already? Am I going to pass it to this person? There was paranoia. There was all of these negative energies kind of requesting so much from all of us. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, in that time, have uh, Ramadan, which is, you know, a month, the holy month of fasting, Right. Um, and I was able to get closer to God. I was able, and uh, in turn, be able to get closer to myself. Mm. Um, so I'm kind of still holding on to some of that energy yeah. and using it and, and, and preserving it and, and pray that I can preserve it throughout the rest of the year. Um, because, you know, within that, you, you fast, you don't eat or drink water for while the sun is up. Mm -hmm. No smoking, um, no drinking alcohol, no, try, no cursing. Mm -hmm. You try to refrain from gossiping. You try to refrain from just any of that energy that could be put into something positive right. you know you refrain from giving it to negativity mm -hmm. and i think that that's just something it's always nice to have that month because it comes around every year it's not at the same time every year it actually goes back a um, month you know but um it, it yeah that's just that's what's kept me grounded and i definitely recommend it anybody can fast you know you don't have to be muslim I know a lot of people, um, you know, just do intermittent fasting or, you know, we'll do a fast for a weekend. But just something like that, that puts things in, into perspective of we are all people. Right. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter how many followers you have on Instagram. It doesn't matter how much money you have in your account. It doesn't matter. You know, like we are all people at the end of the day. And so rem being reminded of that humanity helps me so much in times of chaos it doesn't matter where the chaos is coming from what is your hope for us as a country moving forward what's your hope um my hope is that there are systems that change there are changes within the system mm -hmm. um right now i've been standing by and scream and screaming and shouting with everybody else to defund the police i believe mm -hmm. that that's what needs to happen right now right i believe that funds need to be reallocated to within the black communities mm -hmm. and we need to uplift black people right. as a whole right all black people mm -hmm. black men black women black trans men black trans yes. women 
Yes. Uh, kids. Yes. Black bodies and black spirits need to be uplifted. And in order for that to happen, there is money because we live in a capitalist society, you know, <laughs> capitalistic society. So that's what I'm that's what I'm aiming for in a more metaphorical, you know, sense. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want I want my niggas to be good. OK, that's that's just what it is. I, don't, I, don't, I want it. us to. I want us to be good. I want us to continue to have conversations in which we are challenging things. Yes. I want us to stop labeling. I want us to dead this whole, that's some white people shit. I want black people to to be complex and as complex as we are and yes. want to be at any given moment. Yes. I want this idea of blackness to be er erased right. because we define it ourselves. Right. But for so long, this this society mm. of of built on you know and, and fueled by white supremacy has been trying to put us into a box. Right. And so now that we are breaking out of that box and have been for years, because I won't say that I'm that this generation, our generation, I think it's arrogant for us to say, oh, we our ancestors, blah blah blah, wasn't doing this, that, and the third because we were we wasn't there. Right. We wasn't dealing with the shit that they had to deal with. Right. We can only deal with what we're dealing with now. What we're dealing with now is that people are able to have conversations or claiming that they are able to have conversations in ways that they couldn't have before. So let's talk about it. Yeah. And let's also do something about it. For me, I'm a money man. So I think money is important. I know the, the power within money, mm -hmm. power within media. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, for me, I'm an artist. So I'm interested in creating art that helps drive that, you know? Right. I'm interested in helping art in creating art that helps drive different narratives of yeah. the different types of complexities within blackness in America. Right. So that way we can get to, hopefully we can get to a point where it, it, it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be so black and white, but we're not there yet. Right. And so we can't, we can't do, you, you know, we can't say that we are ready to have conversations like that and also still be having to deal with microaggressions and a bunch of other bullshit that limits com conversations. Right. So, well, Sadiq, the people said you've spoken, you were <laughs> You were amazing. Thank, Thank you, you for just your spirit. Thank you for taking the time to share with us today. I feel that um, as I continue to use this platform to talk, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask these questions, especially to you know brothers like yourself. So I had to ask and thank you for being open to share with us. Um, we will be looking for Romeo and Juliet. Yes. And we'll be looking yes. for season two of Wu Tang. Yes. So keep us posted on everything you're doing. We support you, my brother, and thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you so much, Ashley. And to the people out there, I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Yeah. And yeah, just keep running up that Wu Tang, and we'll be yes. back on set, and we will be back creating for y'all. So we'll be watching you. The ladies will be in your DM too. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can, can pull up. Y'all can pull up. I'll be in there too sometime. Ladies, y'all heard that. Pull up. Thank you so much, Sadiq. I appreciate right. you. Okay. Thank bye. you so much, Ashley. You're bye -bye. welcome. Thank you. Bye. Where is the buzz? Where is the buzz? You said we was mine.